Okay. So the second type of uh, motion graph is velocity time graph. We'll quickly discuss this too, and that's the that's the end of this first topic in mechanics. And we can do some questions on that. Um, okay. So just like last time, I want you to think and trans um, uh, interpret the motion of this man. So he starts from a point O, and I take this 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 motion in a straight line. You know that. Uh, I take this direction as positive. That means any displacement this way is a positive displacement. Any velocity this way is a positive velocity. A velocity would be negative if it's moving in the other direction. So this direction I have taken as positive. And this velocity time graph describes this motion. Can you tell me what's happening in each uh, in each uh, section? So if I call if I start with O, A, B, C, D, E, and F. In each part, what's happening? From O to A, what's happening? It moves forward. It moves forward. How does it move? What kind of a motion? When you say move, you can be moving at a constant velocity, you can be accelerating, you can be this. Different types of motions are there. I want to think. Acceleration? Acceleration. O to A. Acceleration. And it is constant acceleration. You have to say that. How do we know that the acceleration is constant? Yes, in a velocity time graph, Gradient is acceleration. How is that? How do we know that? Uh, gradient means y over y over x. Y means a change in velocity over a change in time. Change in velocity over time is acceleration. So any straight slant line in a velocity time graph is acceleration. If the acceleration is changing, then it would be a curve. You know, we won't get that because you only have constant acceleration problems. Constant acceleration, not constant speed, constant acceleration. It's, it's, speeding, it's speeding up. Velocity is increasing steadily. Same amount per unit time, same amount. That's why it's a straight line. Okay? So this is constant, constant acceleration, and it's, it's moving in one direction. It's positive. You're on the positive side of velocity, it's moving this way, right? Positive velocity. This is constant acceleration. A to B, what's happening? Constant speed. Constant speed. Not moving. This is the this is velocity. Moving at a constant speed. Is it okay to say moving at constant speed or constant velocity? Should we say constant velocity? Constant velocity. It is constant speed as well. And since he's moving in a straight line, it automatically becomes a constant velocity. Constant speed in a particular direction is constant velocity. So A to B, constant velocity in one direction. Is it the same direction or has it turned back and come back? Same direction. It keeps moving in the same direction. Constant acceleration reaches a certain velocity, stays at that same velocity. So this is constant velocity. B to C, what's happening? Constant deceleration, constant deceleration. Velocity is dropping. Did you hear that? Oh, oh, moving in the same direction still. Same direction. Same direction. Same direction. Same direction. Same direction. Okay. How, why do you say turn back? How do you figure it out? From velocity time graph, how do you figure that out? No. Now, let me quickly take you back to us, uh, take you back to um, displacement time graphs. In a displacement time graph, let's like say I have something like that, a turning back or a changing direction is indicated by what in a displacement time graph? When the, when the graph turns back down, you go in a certain direction, the moment you turn back right here, that means you're coming back. That is in a displacement time graph. You don't have to re memorize it like that. Why do we say like that? Because here the displacement is increasing. Means you're 
from the starting point, you are, you are moving away from that. And then from this point onwards, your displacement is dropping means you are coming back towards the point. Your, your displacement from the starting point is decreasing. That's why we say, that's why we know that in a displacement time graph, a turning back, coming back, or a, a person changing the direction by 180 degrees, a new turn, is indicated by the graph turning back. In a velocity time graph, now Marit thinks B to C and B is turning back. B to C, the motion type is deceleration. How do we know? Because this is velocity. The velocity is dropping as time passes by, it's dropping. Slowing down, so it is deceleration. Like now we say that from B to C, it is from uh, time back. This is a But then, uh, then like, when we get into questions in physics, we don't consider the uh, uh, like change in direction. But, like, have any condition? Are you doing this? Yeah. Now, here too, uh, I'll come to that, okay? Now, I have purposely put, drawn the same straight line. Means same, the, the value of the acceleration is the same. The gradient is the same of this line throughout. Even though I broke it at, I put another letter here. I could have marked this as B to D, but there is something happening at C. A significant something is happening at C. Okay? So you have to talk about what's happening at C when you cross over to the negative side, this graph. But let me just first say from B to C, what did you say? It's deceleration, it's constant deceleration. How do we know that, know that the deceleration is constant? Because the gradient is constant. It's a straight line, not a, could have been. It could have been something like that. That could have, that could have been a deceleration too. Any, any line coming down this way, any line coming down in the velocity time graph uh, middle is deceleration. Velocity dropping is a deceleration. Here the velocity is dropping steadily, the same amount every time, same amount every time. That, mean, that means it is constant deceleration, just like here, constant acceleration. Any line going up could be, even a curve could be acceleration. So if, it, if you have a curve, curvy line going up, it would be acceleration, but non-uniform, not non-constant, changing acceleration. Is this clear? Okay. So B to um, B to C, B to C is constant deceleration. Right? What exactly is happening at C? It comes to zero. It turns the other direction. Okay. And if they go reverse. At C. At C, what's happening? It is at its side. Turn side. No, turn. Uh, what's the velocity at C? Zero. Zero. So he stopped there. Momentum. Momentum really for a moment. For, for a for a at that at that moment. Next moment, what is this? He's still moving. He stops and so here at C. Um, how can I, let's say, uh, stops momentarily. You can't say he's turning, He is turning. How do we know he's turning? I mean, if I, what if I, if, what if I turn it on the ground back up like that? It would mean, what would this mean? What would this mean? So he slows down, slows down, stops. So he, he slows down, stops, and goes back again in the same direction. Means what? If he turns, it will not be velocity. Huh? If he turns, it will not be velocity. Why not? You are straight You are so plus minus. You are changing direction by one hundred and eighty degrees. That's why not going into negative velocity. Changing the direction. Changing the direction. Changing the direction means acceleration is changing. Is that what you are saying? Yeah, when you change direction, then. Uh, okay, you are thinking about the, the motion under gravity now? And why do we take the same? Uh, what is your question? I don't know what your question is. Okay. 
So from C to D, what is happening? At C, he stops. Now, let, let, let me say it again. From O all the way through A to B to C, he's moving in one direction. This is the band, he's moving in that direction. Okay? First he accelerated, then constant speed, then he decelerated, and at point C, he stopped. And then he, C to D, what's happening to C to D? He has changed his direction, he has come, he's coming back, turned back. What, what is the type of motion? How is he coming back? How is the constant Velocity is changing the constant bit like this? Negative acceleration. Constant acceleration. Negative constant acceleration. It's acceleration? Yes. Yeah. He's speeding up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's speeding up, but the, the, the negative sign only means he's coming in the other direction. But the size of the speed is increasing. What, like, think of that as the one, two, three, four, five, six, it's increasing. In the negative direction, means in the other direction of motion, he's coming back. So he went up to some, so say point C is here, he turns back and goes back like that. Okay. So from C to D, again, it is constant acceleration, but in the opposite direction. Constant acceleration in opposite direction. D to E. Uh, what is? You said what? Negative constant acceleration. Wait, wait. If you say negative acceleration, constant negative If you say negative acceleration, that would be acceleration. That is correct. Yeah. So no, this is actually. If you find this gradient, now the main thing here is that it's right on the side. In a velocity time graph, the main, there are two things, two important things to remember in a velocity time graph. There are two formulas or equations that you can apply to find the two things in a velocity time graph. First is the acceleration. Acceleration can be found by finding what? In a velocity time graph, acceleration is equal to what? Slow, gradient, slow, gradient, gradient. That's like a formula that you should remember. If I had given you values in this, uh, in this uh, graph, you can find, you can calculate this acceleration. You can calculate this deceleration. You can calculate that uh, acceleration. And this would be, now you see it's the same straight line I have drawn. That means from B to D, the value of the acceleration is the, if you don't pay attention, it's not my fault, is the, is the same. The value of the acceleration is the same. So if you, when you find, uh, and, and what's the sign of this gradient? It's a sign, now if you find this gradient, what kind of an answer would you get? A negative answer. So I mean, you would get something like, negative 4 meters per second square. From B to C, negative 4 meters per second square. From C to D also, negative 4 meters per second square. Same value. And negative. Is this your question? It's, yeah. it's negative. So are these two the same? How do we know if that is? Due to, we don't know. From the graph we can say, from the value you don't know. Uh, if I say that uh, 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 an acceleration is, Negative minus, uh, uh, sorry, negative four meters per second square. If I just give you this value, how would you interpret this negative sign? You can say, uh, and, and if I say, okay, this, uh, this is the acceleration of a certain person, uh, the display motion I take as positive. Then what does an acceleration of minus four meters per second square mean in words? What does that minus mean? 
you can say it's moving that way and decelerating. Where did the deceleration come from? Because it's negative. You can interpret this negative sign as a deceleration. This is a negative acceleration. It's negative acceleration means deceleration. Or you can say, there's another way of interpreting this. If you actually don't know what's happening, for example, you can say he is accelerating in the other direction. Let me write this in words. A negative, the, this value negative 4 meters per second squared could be could be decelerating to the right. He's moving to the right and decelerating. Or it could be he's accelerating to the left. These two are equivalent. I mean, uh, in terms of motion, it's different. Decelerating this way, acceleration in the other direction. That means two different things. But mathematically, as a value, it's the same. If I if I if I say somebody's decelerating at four meters per second square to the right, and I and I if I take right as positive, this means minus four meters per second square. If I say he's accelerating to the left at four meters per second square. How do you write it? As, a, as a minus 4 meters per second square. So both these are written as the same, written in the same way. The, the thing is this, it's because with acceleration, we use the sign to indicate two things. We use the plus and minus sign to say whether it is actually accelerating or decelerating. And also we use the sign to say whether he's moving to the right or left, or up or down, whatever, the positive direction or negative direction. You, you understand? So if, if I give you the sign, you can do no, you can interpret it in two ways. Is that clear? So it's not they ask to explain that. That is They will clear. ask you to explain what that means. But I mean, it's a, you have to know that. So here, for example, here, now when the graph is given, you know exactly what's happening. Here he's, he's moving in the, to, the, to the right, I've taken right as positive. He's moving to the right and slowing down. He's moving to the left and accelerating, speeding up. Moving to the right and slowing down is the same as moving to the left and accelerating, speeding up. Because it's the same gradient, the same as a value, it's, it's the same. Okay? And then these two, what's happening here? Constant, constant velocity to the, in the opposite direction. Constant deceleration in the opposite direction. Okay? Graph in the negative side, because the velocity here below, below the time axis is all negative. Negative velocity means it's moving in the other direction. There, the negative side means direction. In velocity, there is no confusion. If you have positive velocity, positive 2 meters per second, means I'm making this side as positive, to the right as positive. Interpret this in words, the velocity, constant velocity of plus 2 meters per second. This man is moving, so I, I, my positive direction is right. Is that right? Yeah. What acceleration? Meters per second? Constant. Constant speed, constant velocity to the right. This means constant speed to the left. That's it. No confusion there. Positive velocity means constant speed to the whatever your positive direction be. Usually it's right. Negative velocity means constant velocity to the left. It's only here that that negative sign can be because it's a, there is deceleration also. This is uh, if they give plus 2 ms uh, minus, minus 1. Two. Then that is acceleration. <laughs> then that can be A. Acceleration to the right. And uh, can we say uh, deceleration to the left? To the left. Can we? Yes, you can. A positive sign, because positive can be thought of as minus times minus. It's like this. 
what kind of a gradient? Now you you interpret it. The velocity value value wise is slow decreasing. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So it's constant deceleration. But it, but the, what does the minus sign tell you? They are, they are they are all minus values in the other direction. Yes. So constant. Quickly copy now. Constant deceleration. In opposite direction. And there is one more thing that you can calculate in a velocity time graph. Displacement. Displacement. How do you calculate the displacement area between the graph and the time axis? The, so if you want to find from y go to see how far you travel, this area will give you that. If you want to find how far you travel go to f, those two and they will cancel out. Positive uh, and the negative yeah, that's displacement. If you want to find the distance travel, you ignore the negative sign and add them. Area. Areas, yeah. If you want the distance. So if I go that way and come back, my displacement is zero, but I travel some distance. You just add the two values without the sign. Like plus 10, minus 10. That's how I get zero. Yeah. What's the distance I travel? 10 plus 10, 20. Ah, in a speed time graph, the, you don't you don't draw the negative side. You don't think of direction. You just care about the value of the yeah, value of the speed. That's a good question. Are there 3D graphs? 3D? Yeah. There are 3D graphs, of course. Yeah, uh, um, you know the, um, so when you have, you, you learn about functions, like y equals 2 x plus 3, that's a linear function, and the graph is a 2D, 2D graph. Yeah. If you have a two variable function, this has only one variable, y depends on only one, you can have two variable functions. You can have z is equal to 2x plus 3y. Z is your function, it depends on two variables. This gives you a three-dimensional. This is a graph in 3D, and your graph is a surface. This is a line in 2D, this is a surface in 3D. Got that?
But the change of velocity that means acceleration displacement velocity and acceleration in like what you this? Oh, yeah. 
you have only one variable. Y depends on only x. So a single variable function represents a line or a curve. That's a one-dimensional one thing in a two-dimensional plane. When you draw it, you draw it in 2D. Then what is the 2D function? What is the 2D function? What is the 2D function? The 2D object is a plane. Plane. A piece of paper is a 2D object. A surface. A surface is 2D. A line is 1D. A surface is 2D. And space is 3D. And do you understand dimensions? Yeah. You understand? Do you understand? I don't think we have 2D in a graph and 3D in a graph. Maybe the 4th I didn't, I didn't ask here. Oh, say it again. We draw, we draw two D graphs. We draw, we draw two D graphs. Yes, in three dimensions. Three D graphs. We we draw two D graphs and we draw three D graphs. We draw two D graphs in three dimension. You can't draw a three D graph. To draw a three D graph, you need four dimensions to draw it in. Because a line, a line you draw, now I can't, a line I draw on this face, surface. To draw a line, I need two dimensions. To draw a surface, to, to show you a surface, I need three dimensional space. It's in, it's, uh, it's immersed in 3D. So a three-dimensional object, yeah, yeah, and if I want like, yeah. That is, I mean, it's, it's not a spatial dimension. You can think of any other, you can say love is the fourth dimension. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a different, uh, it's a different thing. This, people take time as another dimension. That's, it's not spatial. In space, there are three, only three. But we will cross. It's okay, Ross. Ah, okay. Have you heard of, if you are still draw, uh, writing, uh, while we others way, um, have you heard of this uh, phenomenon? They say that uh, space is curved. Have you heard of yeah, it? Space is curved. If space is curved in a certain special way, if I throw something at a straight line, it will come and come and hit hit my back. Yeah. Um, you do you understand how that can happen? Yeah. How? Because uh, what we even though we hit the ball, the object, the object goes straight. It somehow turns, but we can't like really see it because the. Uh, it's, it's, it's curved. Yeah. You can understand it by thinking of, because when we say space is curved, it has to be curved in a fourth dimension. For it to curve, there has to be another dimension. Now, when you have, so this is a surface, right? This is a surface. If I want to curve it, it curves in the third dimension. Do you understand that? So it, that's not spatial. It's not a, it's not a, how can the, then can this table be the fourth, can matter be the fourth dimension? Can people be the fourth dimension? I mean, how can you just take things and say it's the, it's a dimension? It's not a spatial dimension. It doesn't create any space, new space. Does it, when you add light into a system, does it create new space? No. Now, length, breadth, and height are spatial dimensions. They, they add something new to the system. Okay, are you done, Sophie? Yes. Right. Did you understand this? Do you remember this? You have learned this before. So we are straight away getting to a question. Uh, and just to um, emphasize on this, in a displacement time graph, a turning back, a coming back of the object is indicated when the graph turns back down. It goes up or up. When it turns, when it has a turning point, basically. You understand that? Am I just talking to myself? Are you listening? Did you, just, did you understand what I said? In a displacement time graph, a change in direction of the object is indicated, indicated when the graph turns. Any turn in the graph is a 
change, change in direction. In a velocity time graph, your your graph crosses the axis, x-axis, the time axis. That's when the turning back. Velocity time graph, we have two sides. Yes. In displacement time, also we can have that. We didn't discuss that. You don't have it. But yeah, we did copy and draw that. When you when somebody asked, I said that. That would mean in a, in a displacement time graph, the graph goes to the negative side. That means you are going past your starting point to the other side. That's because displacement can be negative if you have gone that way. Yeah. Something past the point, past your starting point, your reference point. Okay. Um, your, do you have your books? The textbooks? Yes. Uh, if you don't, no, I will take it. I will take it to the WhatsApp group. It's a PDF. It's actually the larger than 25. So it's a PDF. It's a public library, but it comes to my private way. This is how I did it. So when you email, some email, some email and attachment that is too large, you get attached, it automatically gets attached to the uh, Google Drive. So it gets attached to my and this is my web. No, no. Only that file. The file that you are sending can be accessed, yeah. Now, how many of you have your books? You have. There's a book here, there's a book there, there's a book here. Uh, then shall we do a past? I can give. I was going to do a question from the. I'll tell you. Can you copy a question? Then I'll give you from a past paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, wait. No, I, I prefer you doing this particular. Okay, I'll quickly put it on the board. Quickly copy this. Right exercise. Question number one. Exercise question number one. We'll start with a question on velocity time, on a velocity time graph. Okay. This 
is from a past paper. Okay, this question is from a past paper. Are you ready to write? Are you ready to write? Okay. The diagram shows the diagram shows a velocity time graph. The diagram shows a velocity time graph. Which models the motion, which models the motion of a particle, of a particle from time t equals zero, simple t equals zero to simple t equals capital T, from simple t, from time equals zero. That means from time equals zero. From t equals zero to t equals capital T. The particle reaches its maximum velocity, capital V. The particle reaches its maximum velocity, capital V, at t equals ten. Part one. Find the acceleration. Find the acceleration of the particle. Find the acceleration of the particle during the first two seconds. During the first. Two seconds. Part two. Find the value of capital V. Find the value of V. First part one mark. Second part two marks. Find the value of V. Capital V. What did you miss me here? Uh, that's maximum velocity. V. V. Then in a new line, not not a part number, just in a new line, right? At t equals six, <laughs> at t equals six, keep referring to the graph. At t equals six, the particle is instantaneously at rest. The particle is instantaneously at rest at the point capital A at the point capital A full stop at t equals capital T at t equals capital T The particle comes to rest at the point B. Capital B. The particle comes to rest at the point B. At t equals zero. At simple t equals zero. The particle starts from rest. The particle starts from rest. At a point, at a point, one third of the way from A to B. At a point, one third. Of the way from A to B, part three. Find the distance AB 
find the distance AB and hence find the value of capital T and hence find the value of T capital T and hence find the value of capital T. Four marks for that. Can you, is that all, is that all, that's all. Can you do that? Let's do it together. Part one can be easily done. Acceleration of the particle in the first two seconds. Have to write the formula acceleration equals variance. Yes. Yes. Should we write the acceleration as negative or positive? Negative, it's a negative variance. The value of the acceleration is a negative value. How do we get that? Negative 2 minus 0 divided by 2 minus 0. Y difference over x difference. We get negative. It's negative 1. Remember the only two formulas that you uh, have you you that are available for you to use are the two formulas I gave you. There's not from out of a velocity time graph that you can find everything that you're asking using those two. Acceleration equals variance, displacement equals area on the graph. That, that's all that you have to use here. You have to think how to apply them and where to apply them, how to make the connections. Did the thing just Yes? Now, this is a straight line all the way, right? So the whole thing is one accelerator. Value-wise, one value. You say one gradient, this is right? Same gradient. Do you, do you see that? So you can find that gradient from this. You have all the information, like all x difference, y difference, all is there. You can find the value of this gradient using this piece of the line. And the gradient of that part of the line must be equal to the same value. First find the gradient using the, between these two points, find the gradient of this using these two points. And then equate that gradient to the gradient of those two points. You can you can be there. I mean it's just nothing, you don't even have to think of uh, any mechanics here. It's just like pure mathematics. You know? If you need to put, if you need to label the graph, do it. Like if I say PQR, P, Q, R, V, 
gradient from P to Q is the same as gradient from Q to R, isn't it? Because it's the same acceleration in terms of like if I read in the mechanics terms, uh, acceleration from P to Q is the same as acceleration from Q to R. It's from a paper. Why? The second part Let me add another sentence. Uh, this is just for your information. Acceleration, acceleration from P to R. No, with the sign, everything. Same, one gradient. Acceleration from P to R is the same, a constant. It's constant. Now, part three is the literature. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe. <laughs> I don't have it. Let me check. Let me check. You want to know what it is? 24. Wait. Distance AB is 24. Time? Okay. Do you want me to read part 3 again? The sentence before part 3? The last sentence after F. I'll just read the whole thing. At P equals 6, at this point, the particle is instantaneously at rest. We know it, we can see it. At the point A, at, at P equals at T, the particle comes to rest, comes to rest at the point B. Here it's at the point A, here it's at the point of this. This is a motion happening in a straight line, right? So at P equals uh, 6, the it's at the point A. At P equals at T, it's at the point B. Right? And then at P equals 0, the particle starts from rest at a point one third of the way. You want to somewhere here? It has, at, at P equals 0, the point that the object started its journey is between A and B. It says it's well. 
at a point one third of the way from A to B. One third of the way. One third divided into three parts. One third of the way right here. At T equals zero, this is where it started. Can you first think of how, how this person moved, person or object, particle or whatever, how it moved? It first moved in the negative direction, then you see it went to the left. So it went to the left, it came to A, at this is A, it turned back, it, it went all the way to B. That's the move, that's, that's, this is how it's going. That's how it's going. It started like that. Yes. No, it was a, a nice round answer. 18, yes. Good, happy. Did you get uh, 24 for the distance AB? So at this point, it's at A. I will call it A now. A, this is B. You have to find the area under that part for, the, for that distance, right? That is under part B here. AB distance equals area as the area shaded in my diagram area shaded that is what that's a triangle half then half to which half base is six to uh, half you don't know t there right I just don't copy my work. Uh, you have to think. Take your time. This is three times. 
I'll say area below. Area above. T axis. This and area below. T axis. That you can find so three times. Half. Base is six. Height is two. Eighteen meters. Done here. That's a, that's a very trick, I mean, good question. You really have to connect things here. Yeah. Why? It's the YouTube center. How do you get the center? Huh? It means you can't find the Why you don't? I know this is the three times this. Yeah, with extra triangle. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, wrong, 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 wrong. I still get the same one. I thought 18 is 24. No, okay. It's a trapezium. It's a trapezium. So it's uh, 6 plus 2, parallel sides, sum of parallel sides, uh, the half times the height. Very good. Three times the trapezium. So it's three times. I know that this is three times this. I want to find that. I can't directly use half bh because I don't know the base. So I have to use that. Then to find time, I know that this is equal to the area above. So this is equal to half times. T minus 6. Malit, you got the answer. B yeah. is 4. From this, you can find T. Okay, are you ready for the next question? Any questions on this? It was hard. Part three was a little bit challenging, yes. But first and second part. So in any question, a uh, lot of questions are designed that way. The first few parts, I, I mean, anyone can, the average student can do. The last part differentiates the, the best student. Like you have to differentiate A star from a, B, that's how, so they have, they have, they are up to be parts like this. They, they are a bit challenging, but uh, at least you can get halfway through of that work. That's how we will learn how to do challenging questions also, okay? So your first question itself was a challenging one. Um, I'll go to the next question. Let's do a displacement time graph question quickly. Okay, shall we write? Are you ready? Can I raise? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's quickly write. Can I raise this side? Number two. Don't run either. Number two, you have a displacement time graph. X in meters, T in seconds. And the graph goes. Uh, 
curl the part in the beginning like that and then straight so see what this is 120 this is 1500 Okay, ready to write? Have you write? A, tra a train starts from rest. A train starts from rest. Train starts from this at a station. And travels in a straight line. And travels in a straight line. Until it comes to rest again at the next station. A train starts from rest at a station. And travels in a straight line until it comes to rest again at the next station. Part one. The speed of the train is a constant. You can already see that from the graph. From where to where it is constant. Very good. The speed of the train is constant from 120 second to 440 second. The speed of the train is constant from 120 second to 440 second. T equals 120 to T equals 440, right? In any way you want. Find this speed. Find this speed. This, the speed of the train is constant from 220 to 440 seconds. Find this speed. Two marks, part two. to 120 to 440. Yes, you can see it in the graph. Why do you look at it? Look at your own graph. Where it is straight, where it is constant means where it is a straight line. But given that the acceleration of the train, given that the acceleration of the train is constant from 0 to 120 seconds, Given that the acceleration of the train is constant from 0 to 120 and from 440 to 480. Given that the acceleration of the train is constant from 0 to 120 and 440 to 480. Make a sketch of make a sketch of the velocity time graph, make a sketch of the velocity time graph showing the maximum speed of the train. Showing the maximum speed of the train, three marks. Given that the acceleration of the train is constant from 0 to 120 and so to 480, make a sketch of the velocity time graph showing the maximum speed of the train. First part is very easy. Again, if you have a displacement time graph, there's only one formula you have. What 
is that? There is only one formula that you have that you can apply to a displacement time graph. Velocity equals gradient. Velocity time graph, you have two formulas. Acceleration equals gradient and displacement equals area. Here only one formula, or everything should be done with that. That's that's all, right? So, part one. Nothing. It's not a, it doesn't give a useful physical quantity, the area on the graph. You can find it, it doesn't give you anything, but it's not anything. Part one, you have to find this speed here, constant speed. Can you put some uh, letters in it? Easy to easily can refer. A, B, C, D. Then velocity from B to C. Velocity from B to C equals variant. That is oops. That is How much? So you have to correctly identify the type of motion, that's all. A to B, gradient is increasing, that means velocity is increasing. Is it not? So constant acceleration, constant velocity, constant deceleration. How do you show that in your Yeah. 
it said showing the maximum velocity. So you had to mark it in your sketch. <laughs> Let me see your graphs. Yeah, and you can also ask the time uh, values. Is the hundred and hundred and twenty of second it accelerates, constantly accelerates. Then from hundred and twenty to four forty constant speed. Then from four forty to four eighty it accelerates until it stops. Easy to lose the time now. Under that, right? This point is 120. This point is 440. This guy stops is 480. And this is 25. If you find this, yes. Now, if you want to find the speed at B, then we should divide off by 100. Speed at B is this. Also 25. From here, 25, 25, 25. The speed is 25. Yeah, can't we find it by dividing up to 500 by This by this. Yeah. yeah, you can do that if you if you um yeah. but but that's, uh, are you different? Ah uh, no, you can't. What? Then you will be thinking that it's a it's a straight line really. Mm -hmm. When you divide 1500 by 120, what you are doing is this y difference as the y difference you are taking. When you find gradient, you have to have a y difference over x difference. If you are just looking, can you find a find a find the gradient at a point just by plugging in the y and x coordinates of a point? You need two points. If you put 1500 of 120, that means you have to okay, yeah. If you have the function, you can do. That. If you have this function. Or this function you can do. So this function is a linear function. You can but you can find you can what's what, what if you want to write an equation for this part, this is what e equals 25 p minus something the gradient is minus something. If you if you find this area here under the trapezium, it should be equal to how much? Ten thousand. We'll stop from that. I will send you one more question in the WhatsApp group for mechanics homework homework question. Yes. Okay. Mechanics. WhatsApp group. Yeah. So check that please. Pio also from the booklet I will send you. Thank <laughs> you.